AWS Networking, VPCs, Availability Zones, and Raw Tables. Part 1. Up until 5 to 10 years ago, developers were mainly focused on the business logic, creating uh, REST uh, APIs, and creating the UI and the uh, business uh, logic. Since 5 to 10 years ago, when cloud technologies have uh, emerged, about 10 years ago, then developers can now replace also the uh, production and networking because they can define them as code. Um, basically, physical constructs as code, infrastructure as code. Um, we are also replacing the QA and the product and the finance and the human uh, resources because we are doing all the interviews, etc. But this is something for, for the future. So basically, the whole company is the software developers. This is the focus and this is great because more power to software developers. So now let's go back to AWS uh, networking. Um, so basically, a basic IP address is composed out of uh, IPv4 is composed out of uh, 32 bits. 32 bits for IPv4. So if we create a software, we need an IP to expose it to the internet. Not only do we need an IP to expose it to the internet, we need IP addresses such that internal components would to communicate one to another. If you have five services inside your uh, production, then you want these to communicate one with another. You want rules. You want them to be able to access one another. So the basic construct is that we have AWS networking. When we want to have the best, b the most basic construct in AWS net networking, this would be a VPC. It's a virtual private cloud. So the basic construct is a VPC. For a VPC, we defined an, uh, it, we already receive an actually uh, default IP range. The default IP range by default is 172.31.0.0 slash 16. This IP address is very special. It's actually an IP range, 172.31, because you won't find it for any website over the internet. This is defined as a private IP. Slash 16 just means that the first 16 bits are for the network and the last 16 bits are for the hosts, which means that 16 bits for the hosts, we can have 30, 65,000 hosts. This IP will never conflict with the internet. The default one, the 172.31.0.0 slash 16. The IP does not exist over the internet. This is the default one that we go to uh, our VPC. Okay, so great. So we define the VPC. We have our own network and now we have IP range. We have IPs to, to, to give to different services and different sub components. So, so, so we have our own cloud, our own VPC. When we have our own cloud, our own VPC, which exists in a specific region, we want to subdivide it. Makes sense. So we subdivide it to availability zones. An example availability zone is named EU West 1A or EU West 1B or EU West 1C. A, B, C. Each of them is an availability zone. So let's look at a hierarchical manner. At the base, we had the VPC with 172.31.0.0 slash 16. 16 is the means the first 16 bits are for the network, the last 16 bits are for the hosts. So now we will take this 172.31.0.0 and divide it um, to each of the availability zones. Each of the availability zones is a subcomponent of the VPC. Okay, class VPC fields array of availability zones. V class VPC has an IP range. Each availability zone will also have its IP range, but its base network would be a, a sub, sub part of the main VPC network IP. So if the main VPC network IP was 172.31.0.0, the then a AZ 1A would, for example, have 172.31.0.0, okay, slash 24, which means 
we are now only left with 6 plus 2 is 8 bits for the number of hosts. The second availability was zone, for example, 1B would have 172.31.1.0, not .0.0. And the third one would have 172.31.2.0. Uh, so we took the third component, 172.31.0.0. So the, the first dot zero is becoming dot zero for the first availability zone, is becoming dot one for the second availability zone, becoming dot two for the third availability zone. And for all of them, we define slash 24, for example, which means we are going to have 24 uh, bits for the network, which makes sense because we have pivoted the, the next eight bits. We have pivoted the 172, the 31 to zero or dot one or the two. So it's now becoming slash 24. And we can define, which is okay, last host for each availability zone. Um, now, the fact that we have defined an availability zone doesn't mean that the, the, the host can talk to one to each other. So all these IP addresses that we have mentioned for the availability zones, the dot one, dot two, dot three, they are all in subnets. So again, the hierarchy is like this. We defined a VPC, class VPC. Class VPC has an array of availability zones. Each such object of availability zone has a subnet. Each sub subnet has an IP range which is de derived from the main VPC IP range. And then uh, all the hosts now can talk one to another over the network. Okay, so this was part one of uh, AWS networking, VPC availability zones and in the next part, we'll continue talking about route tables in part two, route tables, and continue our journey in AWS networking.